hello viewers so i am back with my new video of uassst for grade 7 origins of science in south asia so here we have the learning objectives to learn about the influence of indian mathematics and science in the pre modern period the ua link UAE had many intellectuals from different fields that brought about advancement in the society. The CC link, mathematics, as the topic has reference of trigonometry, and obviously it deals with history also because it is about the talk of the past. So here we have the brainstorm question from the textbook. You can go through. I have put two of science and the other two are the examples of mathematics. Uh, let us see about Ibn Sina and Indian mathematics. Some pharmacies in the UAE are named after Ibn Sina. He was a physician, poet and scientist. In a book about his life, Ibn Sina states that he was tutored in mathematics by an Indian teacher in an Indian manner. This meant that Indian systems of calculation and numeric notation were advanced for the time. Indian style mathematicians used the number system with zero and had a decimal system similar to the one we use now. So you can understand by this that Indians were so good in mathematics, they were so advanced in mathematics that the number zero and the decimal system has been invented in India. Abu Rayyan al-Biruni, he was a polymath, scholar, scientist, mathematician, historian and a sociologist that lived during the same time, the time of Ibn Sina. He was born in what is now called Uzbekistan, that is in central region of Asia. Al-Biruni wrote in detail about India, its people, social and economic systems of that time. He also wrote about Indian mathematics and science as he found in the 11th century. He wrote about using fractions, a system of measuring and estimating the size of the earth using the principles of trigonometry. When you go on the net, you will be able to see the formulae of trigonometry and in your higher grades, definitely you will come across this trigonometry and how one can do the calculations and uh, estimate the size of anything like the size of the mountain. You can easily estimate or calculate with the help of this uh, formulae of trigonometry. In the system, he described the height of a mountain and the angle of a point to the horizon on the sea. And these were used to calculate the circumference of the earth within an accuracy of one percentage. Now, this is activity one from your textbook. You can go through the answers. Great Observatory at Jantar Mantar, Jaipur. There is one at New Delhi also. The Great Observatory at Jantar Mantar was built in the early 18th century. It included 20 fixed structures, the one which you can see in the picture over here as well as in your textbook, that served as stations to observe specific objects or positions in the night sky. That means with the naked eyes, one can just go and see the night sky, the stars, but there was no such thing as telescope in those days. All the telescopes were not developed yet in that part of the world. The observatory allowed people to make precise observations about movements in the sky. Movements in the sky with regards to the stars. The observations were used in mathematical calculations and in astronomy. Activity 3 from the textbook, please go through. Water, fountains and baths. 
The Shalimar Garden Complex in Lahore, Pakistan was built during the Mughal period. It featured a constant supply of fresh flowing water that also fed the hammams or you can call it as baths of the residents of the palatial complex. So those who were the occupants of the palatial complex of the palace used to have this particular system of baths in which there was a fresh flowing water supplied to the hammams or baths. These fountains uh, were found at the Lahore fort and built in the Mughal period before the British rule. You can see the Shalimar gardens of Lahore put up over here in the slide. We have many such gardens in India too, which we call them uh, commonly as Mughal gardens. And especially when you go to Jammu Kashmir, so in Srinagar region, you'll find many such Mughal gardens. So this is activity four from your textbook again. You can go through the answer. You can add some more points of your own. I come to the end of my video. Thank you so much for watching my video. If you have liked it, please give me a thumbs up. Do subscribe if you haven't subscribed. And share it with your friends, relatives and acquaintance. Take very good care of yourself. Meet you next time with my new video. Till then, take care. Bye-bye.